Now in this Silk Central Getting Started video, we're going to look at the process of performing an execution and in this we'll create an execution plan and execute manual test and raise a defect. So the first thing we're going to look at doing is under execution planning, we're going to select manual execution planning. And what this is going to do is this is going to bring up an interface which is going to allow us to select the type of test that we wish to execute and then allocate these to a test cycle. On the left hand side we have the filter criteria. Under here if we had predefined filters to select appropriate tests for execution we could choose our filter or create a new filter. Below this we have the concept of quality goals and assignment progress which is something we'll look at in a later video but this really introduces the concept of risk-based testing and requirement driven testing. The middle column here which identifies the matching tests or the tests which are available within here is where we're going to be able to select our appropriate tests. Under the name column we can do a drop down on the name column and we have the option to do a filter. So in this example here, I'm just going to select one manual test and to an execution plan. Under the filters, I'm going to type the word evaluation. And this is going to bring up any test which has that word within it. Here we can see that we have the test that we created as part of the create test video. Now in this case here, I can select to go and view the information for the evaluation checklist direct in the test pane. I can see here the plan time was 10 minutes and I can see here under assigned that it has not yet been assigned to a plan. On the right hand side, we have the concept of test cycles. And what a test cycle is, is it's a way for you to schedule a group of tests and you can call this a release, a sprint, an iteration, or a cycle. The choice and naming is up to you. Now rather than create a new test cycle, I'm going to use an existing cycle. And here I have a testing cycle four, which under here I have a number of testers which have been assigned. We have some information on the screen which will indicate the level of capacity. So here I have 63 hours worth of testing, of which I've already planned 60 hours, so I have three hours left. And this is made up by the amount of hours that have been made available from each of the individual testers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at dragging and dropping my matching test down onto my resource. So as you can see here as I hover over admin I have one test selected and when I let go that then updates this into the admin queue and the test here moved from two to three tests and their usage increased. The overall resources here we can see now shows that we've used 60 hours and 10 minutes of testing. Now just to view some slight further information, I can select test assignment and then I could select admin to see the details of the three tests that have been assigned. If I had over scheduled the resources and gone beyond my capacity here, I could drag and drop a test. In this example, I'm just going to quickly drag the product under load test and I'm going to drag that down onto S Miller. We can see their capacity has increased to 100% and admin has reduced. So that's just the process of allocating tests to a test cycle. What I'm now going to do is I'm now going to go to my dashboard. So if I select home, it will take me back to my dashboard. On my dashboard, I'm then going to have a panel which is called manual tests assigned to me. In this case here, this is assigned to the demo project. So this is going to show all tests which are assigned to me within the demo project. Under here, I can see I have two tests which are allocated. The first being the evaluation checklist, which I had a plan time of 10 minutes and I can see it's not executed. Over here on the right, I can see that this came from test cycle four. Now to execute this test, I'm going to select the first icon, which is continue manual test. What this is then going to do is going to bring up my manual test interface and this is going to show me information against my test as well as to give me my steps to execute. Top section of the screen will give the high level information at which point I can select the requirement to view and I can view further information on the builds and versions. Now in this video, we're just going to really focus on the process of execution. At the top level here, I have actions which I can perform at a test level. I can 
can form a capture screen, I can create a video, I can add result files, I can raise a defect. And these are actions to perform at a test level or below we'll see the information for a step level. I have steps one, two and three. At step one, again, you can see I can create a screenshot, I can create a video, an attachment or a defect. On the right hand side, at a step level, we have the option to select our statuses to mark the steps as passed or failed. So on this example here, under action description, I have the option to log into my application. Here I have a hyperlink which will open up my website for me. So that's opened up my website. If I quickly go back to my manual web interface, here I can enter the result. Now what I can do at this point here, I could do a screenshot and on this screenshot what this is going to do is this is going to label, enable me to annotate information. So I can highlight a section of the screen and I can annotate this and indicate to the developer that I pass this information to what issue may exist. I can then select upload and that is now an attachment against that step. So here we can see we have one attachment which will be the screenshot. Now what I'm going to do at this point is here I'm going to indicate this step has passed. Once I indicate that step has passed it's automatically going to continue to my next step. So at this point here it's going to say access records and I can indicate the results. So on this one here I'm just going to indicate this is a fail and I'm just going to then raise a defect against this. So here at this point I can select assign or create issue. When I select that icon, it's going to bring up my defect screen. This point here, I have a profile, and this profile is going to link to whether you're using the Silk Center issue manager that's inbuilt, which is linked to the demo project, or if I had Jira or Bugzilla configured, you'd be able to connect your Jira or Bugzilla instance. Now, at this point, I could connect, assign an existing issue where I'd need to know the issue ID. However, let's create a new issue. So I'm going to enter a new date defect here. It's automatically brought in the test information and the details as to the step which has failed. I can now add supplementary information which will pass to the development team. At the bottom here, I have a username and a password, which is the username and password to your defect tool. In this case, because this is a Silk Central issue, it's going to be your Silk Central username and password. We then have additional fields at the bottom, which I can say what type of issue and additional fields that I can choose down to severity. So I'm going to say this is a normal severity. Now, the type of fields you have here, some of which can be customizable. Once I select OK, then you can see here that a defect has now been assigned to this step. So now let's fail that step and you'll see it moves on to the last step. Now, in the example of when we created this test back in the create video, when I created the action description, I said search for um, dollar sign name. And at this point here, the dollar sign name will be replaced with the actual data I used in the parameter. The parameter was the word Becky. So I've done a manual data-driven test here. So you can see it's been replaced. So let's just actually say, well, that step has passed. Now what's happened here, just before I pass this, we can see we've done two out of three steps. So far I've taken four minutes, whereas I indicated that this test would take me 10 minutes. So once I pass this, it's gone to three steps out of three steps. Um, and that has now completed that. So we can now continue and move on to the next test. So if I select continue, it presents the next test in my queue. So let's at this point just close our manual test interface down, go back to Silk Central. Now within my manual test assigned to me window, if I select at the bottom here, refresh, we'll see the status has been updated to indicate a fail. So at this point here, we've executed a manual test, real-time update has been provided into our manual test window, and we're now ready to continue with the rest of our execution.